everyone, and welcome to another Star Wars Power Half Hour right here on the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is David, and we have got some great comic books uh, to go over today with you. Actually got a a pretty decent size haul just going down to our local comic book store. Now, I'm not going to go over everything, uh, at least not in this episode that I picked up. But uh, we, we've got three great comics that we're going to go over here uh, as we normally do. So let's, uh, let's take a ride. Now, our first comic we're going to look at, we've got the fourth issue of the Target Vader series. And this kind of follows our group of, you know, our little motley crew of uh, bounty hunters as they attempt to uh, take down Darth Vader. This has been a surprising one for me. I, I really didn't think that this was... Uh, excuse me, this was going to be as good as it is. Um, and and I, I feel like I've seen a lot of people speak some pretty positive stuff about, about this series. So definitely looking forward to continuing that uh, to its conclusion. Next up, we have Jedi Fallen Order, Dark Temple. So this is our tie-in comic to the Jedi Fallen Order video game that's coming out here very, very quickly. I actually put my pre-order in this week. Uh, this drops uh, right around my birthday, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> and we also have a couple of books uh, coming out in November as well. Uh, Force Collector and then Resistance Reborn. I got the. I have those uh, both on uh, on advanced order too, pre order. Uh, so they will be coming. But again, this is kind of following um, following a young Padawan. Uh, it, it's sort of navigating a conflict on a planet uh, that has this dark temple on it. So very interested to see. The first two comics have been a little eh, I guess, somewhat anticlimactic. <clears throat> now this one, I feel kind of picks up a little bit more into what we, what I kind of expected out of it. And then hopefully once we get towards the end of this series, we should have some pretty cool tie-in stuff. But this one will be interesting, and we'll get into that as well. <clears throat> now, the one that I was probably the most excited about was the uh, the tie into the journey to Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> um, journey, I always want to just say Journey to the Rise of Skywalker, but if you actually read it correctly, Journey to Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. So this is Star Wars Allegiance, and this is uh, issue one here. Very cool comic and a bit of a bit of a thick boy a little thicker than uh <clears throat> than most of the comics that we generally deal with i've said this before one of my one of the uh reasons why i never really got big into comics is uh they were short and i like long stories so this one i actually actually really liked it uh and we'll definitely go over that uh, artwork wise, you know, the, the, the cover that I got here and, and obviously I know we have, uh, you know, alternate covers and everything, but the cover that I got, so we've got the, the millennium Falcon sort of flying around on its side here, shooting its lasers, which is really, really re well done. We've got Leia, um, Amon Calamari, and then Rose <clears throat> sort of framed up here. And then we've got uh, Ray with a with a breathing mask and her staff taking on a uh, a big old snarling, gross beast. <laughs> so uh, so very cool, very cool cover. That's that's certainly something that uh, that's like frameable worthy. So very neat there. Um, so there there's the three that we're going to go over now. I also did pick up. <clears throat> The Return to Vader's Castle, Issue 1 and 2. Issue 1, The Horned Devil. And Issue 2, The Curse of Tarkin. I, man, I, I love Tarkin. Tarkin's always been... He's always been kind of one of my favorite characters. And I I, I, I don't know. I guess he's just he's just such an evil dude. Um, but there's, some, there's always something about him that I really appreciated. Now, this is all a part of the Star Wars Adventures line of comics from IWD. Now, I've, I think I've said it a couple times that our local store didn't carry the IWD comics. Well, I was wrong. They were just in a different section. Uh, so I, I found them. And, you know, the, the Star Wars Adventure series is, um, you know, kind of a little bit younger reader. So sometimes it's in kids' sections. It happened to me in the kids' section. 
I don't check the kids section. I just check the main rack. <laughs> so I was like, where are these things? But anyway, I, I, I didn't read the original Vader's castle series. There was like four or five of those. Um, so I kind of wanted to jump in. I'll get the original ones they're, you know, from my understanding, they're, they're just some neat little kooky stories and so forth. So I'm just trying to ingest as much star Wars as I can. You know, obviously we have, you know, our movie coming out in December. We've got a lot of media coming out. I'm just getting overloaded and it's great. Um, celebration next year. So I, I'm just, I'm just staying pumped. I'm trying to stay pumped. Uh, you know, cause I think, I think one of the things that is a bit of a worry for a lot of Star Wars fans is what happens if this movie sucks? <laughs> what happens if it doesn't live up to expectation? Um, and, and, and it is. It's, it's a fear. So I'm, I'm just trying to immerse myself in as much as I can, get those happy feelings, uh, and hopefully cancel out any darkness that could arise. So, uh, yeah, pretty good haul. I also picked up, this isn't Star Wars related, but I also picked up issue two of the web of black widow. Now I'm not much of a, you know, Marvel superheroes fan, but for some reason I was kind of drawn to this particular series that they literally just come out. Uh, so I'm going to read that. I haven't read it yet. Cool cover though. Um, and then, you know, we'll see what else I can get into. So I think we'll just go ahead and jump right into target Vader. Uh, on our cover here, we have we have a big old Darth Vader, very menacing, his hands outreaching. Uh, we have Dengar, Valance, and then uh, what was the other ones? The mass ones like Rooker is like a sound. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let's jump back in here. Now, when we last left off, our bounty hunters had trapped Vader <clears throat> on the planet uh, Hava, looks like, and. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to, sh- you know, shoot their shot, get their attempt in. Uh, Valance has this uh, little device that's supposed to, you know, I guess trigger like an EMP to deactivate Vader's suit. Um, and that's that's kind of the plan. So we start in super or in a Star Destroyer here. Uh, General Gullen, Gullen, the drones wiped out the remaining ties <clears throat> and the uh, formula was destroyed. Lord Vader is down there alone. It was a trap. The bounty hunters have him surrounded. If, if we scramble the remaining fighters, we should be able to get to him in 15 minutes. 15, that's, that's not enough time. That's correct, Captain. It's not enough time. Those bounty hunters will be dead before the pilots are in their flight suits. So, you know, our, our Imperials here are very confident in Lord Vader's survivability. <laughs> Oh, man. So we show here we've got uh, we've got Dengar, we've got uh, Uruk, and uh, Hanoi and Cho. We've got everybody just kind of set up in position, guns trained on Vader. Uh, Valance is supposed to give the word. And he's got this, e- again, the EMP. It only works on contact. Need to get my hands on the target. Uh, so essentially he's like, just stand, stand off, stand down. Don't do anything stupid. And let's see here. So one of our characters here, and I believe this is Cho, sorry, or Chayo or how we're going to say that. Now he kind of, uh, goes a little nuts, has Vader in his sights. And basically as opposed to listening to the plan, goes charging in, guns blazing. Now, an interesting thing here is we get some flashbacks into the characters' backstories and why they want Vader taken care of. So in this particular one, this is Cho here, and we've got uh, two two fighters, chosen one, and then his uh, his friend here, uh, Roan. And they've got uh, they've got a couple ties and what looks like Vader's tie as well uh, on their tail. Now they're attempting to go to light sp- uh, light speed. Uh, Roan basically attempts to draw the fighter so Cho could get away, and uh, unfortunately is destroyed. The last words from Cho are, or uh, excuse me. 
The last, yeah, the last ro- words from Roan are, I love you, chill, always and forever, always and for boom. <clears throat> Interrupted. So Vader, uh, Vader here in his little battle tactics, I wonder if he said double vision, just like in all the... <laughs> just like in the Thrawn Alliance. Oh my goodness. If you haven't read Thrawn Alliance, one of the craziest things I couldn't, I just couldn't get over it is whenever Vader would go to fight, he always says double vision. I'd love it if he said it out loud. I think it's internal monologue, but anyway, losing the plot here. So Vader stirs up uh, <clears throat> some dust. Here is cover. Our friend here is uh, just shooting random blaster shots wherever he can. Uh, and unfortunately, <clears throat> By doing this, Vader is easily able to deflect these shots and aim them towards our other bounty hunters. One of them catches Valance and uh, sends him sends him flying. And really, Cho is not, or Chayo, I really don't know exactly how to say some of these names. I need the Darth here to help me pronounce stuff. Uh <laughs> But anyway, he he's he's trying to take on Vader here. He's he's got four hands, so he's got four blasters. Four blasters against the lightsaber. I mean, right? <clears throat> Doesn't work out so well for him. So we actually have a uh, have our <laughs> our sound name Nuruk or Uruk. Uh, finally, finally showing herself. Uh, she comes over to assist Valance. And uh, Valance just says, the ricochet didn't kill me. I knew you were no Tuscan, which we kind of established in our last issue. Uh, so, you know, just uh, we got a new female character under under the mask, and she's been our kind of our sniper, our silent sniper. And we have our Ardenian pal here, and he's uh, he's trying but unfortunately, Vader finally gets the better of him and uh, cuts off one, two, three, three of his arms, looks like. But he's still got some, uh, some hope here as our Gamorrean friend uh, attempts to uh, <clears throat> oink her way into the battle. That's all she says is oink. Comes at uh, Vader with an axe, and then we get her backstory. Uh, basically, we've got uh, we've got carrying in some some uh, some sort of creature here. When uh, happens upon, uh, I guess her house, and I would assume this is her spouse, <laughs> who is uh, who has been killed. The house is on fire, and we see a, a stormtrooper's helmet on the ground. Again, you know, all these folks they have a reason to hate the Empire. They they've lost family, they've lost friends. Uh, loved ones. And, and again, this is why we're here. So our Gamorrean friend is really no match for Vader. I mean, you think about just a strong pig creature with an ax against a trained uh, <clears throat> Sith Lord. Not going to do much, but uh, Cho here, or Chayo, is uh, attempting to help with his last hand. He's got another blaster, sends a few bolts. But Vader... Uh, controls him with the force and actually throws him against our Gamorrean friend's battle axe. So he, uh, he has expired. Now from the, uh, from the ridge here, we have our not Tuscan friend in Valance, uh, watching this from their, from their sights. And, uh, they're dead. Valance says they're dead. Focus. I need to get close and I need you to cover me to get close. You hear me? And we get uh, we get our n- now unnameless friend's name, Gita. And we get a little bit of her backstory here as uh, she's doing some hunting with, I would assume, her mother? <laughs> Hopefully. And n- nothing really more in the backstory, just literally this, this hunting scene of her, this really uh, crazy-looking deer thing with giant cheek flaps, which uh, she hits but doesn't bring down and, you know, hopefully she's a better shot now. So anyway, now named Gita, then uh, shoots it, uh, shoots at Vader. Uh, Looks like hits him in the arm, but is then uh, tossed by Vader's force abilities. 
Valenson comes up behind Vader, charges, and actually does set the EMP device on Vader's back. But Vader turns away, and he, I guess he's not able to activate it, maybe, or maybe it just doesn't work. We just get some fizzly sound here, uh, so I, I assume maybe it just didn't work. And then we get Valance and Vader face to face. This is actually pretty cool. So they're face to face, and he says, "Well, go on then, finish this." And then we see, uh, you know, Valance in pain and electrical charge, you know, basically coming out of his chest. And uh, at first, I thought, "Ah, Force lightning," but we get some more dialogue. I did what you told me, Valance. I shut up. And waited for my shot. And here we have Dengar with a control device. It looks like he was the one who uh, shuts down Valance here. He's got the uh, the stormtroopers behind him. So old Dengar, <clears throat> maybe a little change in sides here. <laughs> God, Dengar. Uh, anyway, that is the end of our of our issue here. Looking forward to issue number five. Uh, this one's coming. Wow, man, we got some time to wait. So November 13th for this one. So we've, gosh, we've got, we've got a while. We've got more than a month, uh, to finally, I think finally conclude this. I think this is only five issue arc. I could be wrong on that. At least that's what I remember it being was a five issue arc. So, well, we've got some time to wait for that, but I'll be looking forward to, uh, either concluding that or continuing it should be pretty darn fun. Let's go ahead and take a look at Jedi Fallen Order Dark Temple, issue number three. So, <clears throat> last we left off here, we got some um, present day and some past, obviously. We, we're, we mainly deal in the, in the past here, but we do have some some present day here. Ontothal, you know, being ravaged by... Um, what is it? The second sister, I think here and her, uh, death troopers, uh, you know, around, uh, Phylar and this, this dark temple and our, our inquisitor here is, uh, just doing work. Her death troopers are doing work and they have pretty much killed everyone and they don't seem to be finding what they're looking for. However, our inquisitor has, has some other skills and, and is able to find what looks like to be the entrance to the temple. And we will see how that goes. Um, because obviously this temple has got to be important, right? We haven't figured out what's in the temple yet, but I think we're very, very close. So, uh, to the, well, present time of this comic, but years earlier, (laughs) We have some of our uh, Da security forces uh, showing up on Phylar. We've had this conflict. Uh, you know, presumably our Padawan uh, friend here, uh, Siri or Sari, uh, you know, her master's uh, presumably killed, and she is attempting to defend Phylar with, uh, with their inhabitants. So the security forces uh, come up. Uh, what have we... What have we here? This is not your land. I think you're confused. Antithal is a member of the Republic. We have an agreement with the Antithal government and the Republic that gives us the right to. You have no agreement with the Phylari. This is Phylar. Look around you. Do you really think a child in fancy robes would stop us from doing our jobs? I'm afraid it is you who is confused. I am a Jedi, like my master, in Cordova, whom your people killed. Now please leave the independent nation of Phylar. Um, well, our security troops aren't going to do that. (laughs) So Siri and the Filari commence the fighting. Now, what's interesting here is we, when we started this series, the series, Siri was, or Siri, uh, was somebody who was very prone to random emotional sort of outbursts, very, very emotionally charged, very prejudgment kind of oriented. But now... She's so showing some restraint. She's showing her training. She's stopping some of the folks here from from killing uh, the the human troops, but they are destroying the droids. So her her plan: target the droids, 
uh, incapacitate the droids, but do not kill the, the troops. What about droid rights? What about droid rights? We even have our sassy droid here. Uh, uh, in three, in three low, uh, coming in here. This is, uh, uh, this is awful. Padawan Junda. Surely you don't need to destroy their processors. <laughs> Always a sassy droid. We talked about sassy droids on the last, uh, main show. So make sure to listen to that for my sassy droid rant. <clears throat> so anyway, hours later, our defenders are back, back in the, uh, in the village. And we're still having some arguments here. Uh, you you know, will they come back? Um, they're going to return with a larger force. What are we going to do? And Siri does confirm, you know, he's, he's right. They won't stop coming, which is, which is true. They, they won't, they won't stop coming. And I got to really seriously get rid of Siri on my phone. Every now and again, it, it pops up. I thought I turned that darn thing off. So anyway, it was starting to talk to me right as I was uh, going through that. So that's fun. <laughs> oh, let's see. Anyway, as our, as our group here is, is talking, we do have an explosion. And I think the war you don't want to start just came here this is, this is bitter and we're, we're going to have unfortunately death and destruction potentially. And this renews the battle. So we previously had our, our little skirmish, but now we have more droids and it looks like just solely droids uh, that are showing up. Now uh, the, um, the Falari had taken some uh, containers that belong to the DAW organization and looks like they were tracked. They had trackers, uh, they had trackers placed on them. The row, you know, the the uh, androids here. You are in possession of da corporate property, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. We do, we don't really seem to have much in the way of loss of life, at least in the panels here. God, Sari is is a she seems to be a really formidable warrior. She's she's <laughs> taking care of about everything. Uh, unfortunately, though, one of these droids is. Uh, Looks like he's going after the children, and we kind of get a cool little lightsaber throw. That's something that's not typically seen in the movies until recently. We had our special D23 footage with Ray, who, you know, we get to see her toss the lightsaber, which is something you could always do in the games, which is always just, you know, is pretty cool. Um, so we get Sari uh, as she tosses her lightsaber to disable this droid before it gets to the children. And, uh, she's, she's pretty much becoming like a little hero here. The kids are like, that was scary. Yes, but you're okay now. (laughs) So our Philari here basically come to the conclusion that this is, this is probably war. So our leader here, uh, Sari, how many fighters do you need for your plan? Now we are moving here to the, uh, to the dock camp. And, uh, I came as soon as I heard, I'm in shock. This is a complete disaster commander. The evacuator and all our tanks were lost. Chairman Da. I don't care about the tanks. I'll buy more. Don't talk to me about my money when my people are being killed. So this is interesting. Okay. So our, our chairman here clearly values his troops, his people, But aren't they supposed to be evil? We'll we'll see. But none of our men were killed, sir. How is that possible? It's it's the girl, sir, the Jedi who fought her way out of the city led them. They were only targeting our droids. Really, she's quite impressive, isn't she? Uh, And then kind of go over how they tracked the wreckage um, and attempted to attack again or driven off. So... Now we have a, a contingent of our of our Phi Fi, uh, coming in here, uh, incapacitating some of our troops. Uh, Sari is going for the chairman. <laughs> Getting more sassy robot. I'm not even going to go over sassy robots anymore. So the chairman here is in the bar, pouring himself a drink. 
but he, uh, out of the corner of his eye, he knows somebody's, somebody's coming. Not as quiet as you think you are as he pulls a blaster. And um, very interesting written sound. Some of these comics like to use Pew Pew, which I personally find hilarious, but this one uses Vleet. V-L-E-E-T as its sound effect for its, uh, for its blaster, Vleet Vleet, that, which I don't know why I found that interesting. I just did. Because, <laughs> again, normally I get Pew Pew. I'm as quiet as I needed to be, da. We meet again, Sari Junda. Last time, we didn't get the chance to talk as much as I would have liked before you made your escape. You mean before you had your men try to kill me? I did no such thing. The Antithal government wanted you detained. They didn't know that you thought yourself above their laws. But is that why you've returned? To kill me? You don't understand what a Jedi does, do you? I do. I just wasn't aware you still considered yourself one. Why wouldn't I? Interfering with a lawful business, attacking my men, becoming the leader of a terrorist cell, these don't seem like the ways of a Jedi. You attack the Filari people. The Republic doesn't sanction. I'm a terrible host. Can I offer you a drink? (laughs) As he attempts to uh, push a giant red button. Don't touch that button. You're a little too slow, I'm afraid. I don't blame you. When I was your age, I also believed... I understood how the galaxy worked. I was also wrong. So this is where it gets interesting. Uh, we have a couple droids coming through. Sari takes care of them. I hope you had more than that plan for me. Oh, I do. So be it. And it looks like uh, Sari is, is attempting to now strike down the chairman. But as she does, <clears throat> a blue lightsaber blade stops her. And I, you know, it's funny, just lost my place. I didn't notice how cool her lightsaber hilt was. So it's, it's always been kind of one of those things that I've never done, but I totally need to is like, you know, build a custom saber. When I, I did that one time, like on a site that had like a custom, like a virtual build thing. And so I did this and I, they had a, they had a hilt that had um, the ability to have some leather wrapping around it, which I thought was really cool. And I just sort of noticed in this comic more so than the others. So she's got a very simple hilt that is like completely leather wrapped. I actually think it looks really cool. So that was a little tangent. Let's move on. Master? Sari? Forgive me, Master. I did not know you when I, st- when I struck. So here we have Master Cordova. And uh, we start to see see both of the surprise because Master Cordova thought Sari was dead. Sari thought Master Cordova was dead. And the Master, how wonderful. Remember when you left the caravan the day of the attack? We noticed the force energy in the place is so strong that it overwhelmed us. It must have blinded us in our search for each other. Makes me wonder what other mysteries this planet has in store. Yes, wonderful, but how are you alive? And then uh, the chairman breaks in. That's where I come in. If I may, after the attack on my expedition, Master Cordova was badly injured. You were thought dead. My men brought brought him back here to recover in my personal back to tanks. I I demanded my people keep his survival a secret for fear that whoever attacked would come back to finish what they started. So kind of interesting. Instead of... I can't necessarily say that any of this was handled very well. So the chairman knew personally knew that Cordova was alive. And yet in his encounter with the Padawan here, he doesn't reveal this fact and sort of naturally sort of looks untrustworthy. It seems like we have some misconceptions here that look like they're about to be cleared up, but master, while healing in his care, I've spent a great deal of time getting to know Dalanto here. Master, his goals are very similar to our own in many ways. Master, <laughs> she keeps trying to break in, but Cordova just bulldozes right through. He wants to learn about the galaxy because he knows that place comes through understanding. He keeps you here to distract you. He is making sure you don't contact the Jedi Council. Don't be silly, Siri. He helped me contact the council as soon as I was well enough to speak. And what did they say? I assured them that I would find those responsible for your death and with the help of the chairman of Chairman Da and the Ornithal authorities, bring them to justice. 
but master, but I'm so relieved you are well. Now with you here, we can solve the problem of these Filari terrorists together. Please listen to me. I am fighting with the Filari. Oh my. <laughs> uh, so, so even Master Cordova, nobody is on the same page here. And I think if, I think if everybody would have been a little bit more forthright, because through this conversation, it looks like the Antithal government isn't really all that bad, but there is definitely a feud here bef- between Antithal, the, the government, and then the Filari. So this is something that the Master Cordova is looking to help broker. Two days later, uh, this feels like a trap, right? It's not a trap. My master is bringing them himself. So Master Cordova is bringing the uh, the chairman and the sparks fly. Oh, man. Apologies if we're late. Some of our, the roads were destroyed recently. You mean the roads you've been using to illegally send an armada into Phylar? If that were true, Narali, maybe you could tell us who was who it was that attacked the hypothetical armada. So they go back and forth, and then uh, Master Cordova actually uses uh, one of one of Ceres' moves here, and he sort of projects the force to the ground and pushes both of our of our combatants back, and uh, then has them agree to a temporary ceasing of hostilities. So Sari comes to her master. Master, first of all, don't think I didn't notice you doing my trick from Namiel back there. It is a good trick. What is on your mind, my Padawan? We've barely spoken. You made me bring the Phylari here, and you humiliated them. I can't believe you believe Da over me. Did I do that? You act like both sides are equal. The Phylari are simply defending their land. Are you sure that's all they're doing? Yes, I, well, I'm sure Da has been provoking them into a fight. I'm sure of that as well. Thanks, Sari. I know you've realized things aren't quite what they seem. This temple has started a war, and neither of us knows why. Which is why I wanted you to stay with the Phylari while I stayed with the Antithons. I trust your instincts. Your peace won't last, Master. I don't expect it to last long, no. I just need it to last long enough for us to go inside the temple and see what is going on for ourselves." And they stand here at the precipice of the temple, uh, and this is where we we end this particular seer, uh, particular uh, comic. Oh wow, the next one's uh, on sale also on the thirteenth of November. <laughs> Gosh, oh I hate wait times. Um, but anyway, so now now we now here's where the fun begins. Okay, hopefully, uh, looking to finally get into the temple. Uh, so again, the first couple um, comics in the series were just a little eh for me. This one, I thought, really picked things up. We see sort of a growth in Sari. We get Master Cordova back, and we finally get a look at this temple, and uh, and we'll get into the temple next, maybe. <laughs> Unless this is like an issue of like Dragon Ball Z, and then we have to wait like 15 or 16 issues. Anyway... We have blown past our power half hour, so now we're in overtime. As we go into journey to the journey to I can't say it. I can't say it first the right time. Journey to Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. We've got Star Wars Allegiance here, issue one, and this is a bit of a big boy, like I said. So we're gonna we're gonna get through it. And uh, man, this I I really did I really did enjoy this. So we have some script here, and I'm gonna I'm just gonna read this all out to you. Journey to Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, Allegiance. Uh, And I read it right the right time. (laughs) Thank you. Part one, an old hope. Luke Skywalker is dead, but the Jedi Master's sacrifice, as well as the sacrifices of many rebels, allowed what little remains of the noble resistance to escape total annihilation at the hands of the evil First Order. Supreme Leader Kylo Ren will stop at nothing until the resistance is crushed and the entire galaxy is subjugated. Now, General General Leia Organa, what a word to stumble on. General Leia Organa leads the last rebels, including Jedi and training Rey and the freedom fighters Poe Dameron, Rose Tico, Finn, the Wookiee Chewbacca, the droid C-3PO, R2-D2, and BB-8, and what could be their final stand. 
Together they hope to be the spark that will light the fire to burn the First Order away forever. But they stand alone, and without allies, it could be the flames of the rebellion that are about to be snuffed out. (sighs) Now enter the Caterpillar people. (laughs) The ice planet of Ta Nahuna, the Mid-Rim. Really a beautiful kind of really a beautiful planet. You kind of see these little caterpillar guys. We have always been a peaceful people, a race of scholars and thinkers. Our cities have been hewn out of volcanic glass over centuries, each generation adding to their ancestors' work. Our astronomers have charted the cosmos. Our doctors discovered the cure for the Iridanian plague. Our poets have studied the finest universities across the galaxy. From the hundred year darkness to the rise of the empire, the Tanahuna have kept out of the wars that divided the galaxy. And then you sort of zoom in on these little caterpillars and they have little caterpillar beards and little caterpillar robes. So cute. <laughs> Unfortunately, the first order has come to the planet and our <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it just makes me laugh so much. The head caterpillar guy, I, I'm sure... Why are you calling them caterpillars? Uh, they just look so cool. Oh, the, we have our head caterpillar here, and he's got a he's got like a Doctor Strange robe on. <laughs> he's trying to reason with Hux. Oh, it gave me a good giggle. So anyway, um, Hux here. Basically, the, the rebels had transmitted from this planet and the first order is here to eradicate anyone that had anything to do with the resistance. So our, our leader here of uh, Tanahuna puts out a message, a general distress call that's received by our resistance base as it is being destroyed. And the first order essentially wipes out an entire planet. Oh man, it's tough. This is, this is the first order. They're ruthless. They're horrible people and they're ruthless. So our, um, I don't know, comm operator, whoever was watching this, I don't know if they really give her name specifically, but anyway, she, she runs into, uh, to our little space age bubbles here. So we're on, we're, we're at the resistance camp, the garbage planet, of Anoat. We'll go with that. Uh, General Organa, I'm sorry to disturb you. We've just received a general transmission from Tanahuna, the First Order. They just wiped out their entire planet. We get C-3PO with some dialogue here, which is kind of interesting. It's, it's, uh, I don't know. It, it seemed a little weird a few of the times he spoke up, but of course he's C-3PO. He does this. This must be a mistake. The species is known across the sector for their neutrality. And they paid the ultimate price for their kindness. Leia, you know, they they really drew her really well in here. You see the lines in her face, the the sadness in her eyes. You know, she's kind of hunched over our our resistance uh you know friend here who saw the 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 transmission is, you know seems like she's even holding her up and uh, uh, let's see here. Do we get the name? Uh, so we've got general John Otto who uh, is a little, little short guy and uh, he's basically, you know, laying it out. You know, the pollution here has masked our long range sensors, but it might not help us much longer. And then here, here's, here's the one thing that C3PO says that it's like, why did you, is there nobody else that could have said this, but Oh dear, that sounds ominous. Perhaps it is best to prepare an evacuation plan. All right. C3PO tone it down. <clears throat> but again, they're, they're kind of talking about, and we got this in black spire, this whole plan. It's, they even mentioned Vi Marathi here a little bit, who's searching for more permanent bla- base. They also mentioned snap Wexley, which is super cool is leading a scout team to the most rep- uh, remote shipyards. Finn and Poe are on a risky mission to track down weapons. And then we, uh, we get Rose here. How risky. <laughs> Instead of just waiting around, this is Leia, I think it's time for me to do something. I should have done 
a while ago. Chewy, prepare the Falcon. Uh, here we go. Leia's determined. She's going to get off in the Falcon and, and do some work. So Chewie comes along. Uh, she also is going to take uh, take Rose along with her, uh, which is which is kind of cool. And even Rose is like, me? You want me to go? Well, we need a mechanic, unless you've grown fond of the smells on the garbage planet. Well, if you put it that way, well, I'm ready to go. And then we also need a good pilot. And here we uh, we transition to Ray. So Ray, all of our friends here are stationed on this planet. Ray's, you know, I, th- I think there was a a general interest in, in you know what Ray was going to do after the last Jedi. Is she out, you know, looking for things? Is she having her own adventures? I don't know. She's on the garbage planet with the rest of them, just biding time, trying to figure out the plan. Uh, well, she's not sitting idle. She's uh, here facing down a monstrous Godzilla-looking creature. And it has a name. Anothian Pit Beast. She actually was getting the best of it there for a while, although the, the beast it seems to be a bit of a match for her. Throws her around a little bit. Uh, chomps on her staff, which I want to know what this staff is made out of, uh, seeing as it doesn't do any damage to it. <laughs> uh, you know, Ray start you know uses the force a little bit here to throw some rubbish at the at the monster, but again, it seems like a standoff. Uh, and and essentially, she even says it. It, it actually looks like in a part here that she's trying to sort of tie in that, that beast control or that animal kinship a little bit here because she's talking to it. Uh, no, it's not your fault. I started this. It's just, do you understand what it's like to lose the one thing that made you special to realize so many that sacrificed themselves, believing you were chosen for something greater and you turned out to be a disappointment. No, I guess you wouldn't. If I could use the force to make a mental connection. Well, that didn't work either. This is an interesting statement. To realize so many sacrificed themselves um, believing you were chosen for something greater and you turned out to be a disappointment. Why would Ray think she's a disappointment right now? That's an interesting that that's an interesting thing. And and we'll, we'll we can talk about that a little further here. And I think there might be some time on the main show that we might actually discuss that in more more uh more detail, but I think Ray, it seems like she's maybe doubting herself a little bit here. She's testing herself against this ridiculous big creature. She's not able to take it down. She's not able to make a connection with it. And then essentially she just kind of calls a draw and uh, then the millennium Falcon comes in here. So I, I feel like she's having some trouble right now. I feel like there's maybe a crisis of conscience, which is, uh, which is affecting her. So, I don't know. It should be interesting, but she's excited to get on a mission. Uh, Lay here, you know there are better ways to work out your frustrations than getting yourself eaten. I assume this mission is one of them. Are we going after weapons cache like Finn and Poe? Not a mission, more of a solemn task. With all due respect, General Organa, it sounds like Finn is having all the fun. And uh, <laughs> we flash to Finn uh, getting punched. Uh, sprawling across the bar, looks like he's gotten himself into a uh, into a nice little little fight here. <laughs> Finn would never do that. Uh, and then we have uh, Poe coming in. He's he's cloaked, kind of has BB-8 sort of do a little crowd control and uh, helps Finn off the ground. Says, "Hey man, we need to we need to keep a little bit of a low profile." Uh, there's supposed to be a cache of weapons confiscated from pirates that's been sitting there for years. Uh, let's see here. Oh, excuse me. On the moon of Abadot. Uh, that could give the resistance a fighting chance against the First Order. First, we have to survive long enough to get there. Better get back to the shuttle. I'll go grab Norik and Oron from the supply depot and meet you at the hangar. Whatever you do, keep a low profile this time. So it looks like we actually have a couple of other, uh, other possible resistance friends here, uh, that we're going to meet. However, once uh, Finn sort of goes, he bumps into a, uh, into a woman here 
and uh, she identifies Finn on the comm, and it looks like, well, <laughs> no real big surprise here. There's a bounty on these guys' heads. So we've got a, a crew of bounty hunters. Uh, looks like a uh, six-person team here uh, that are, you know, they're ready to turn them in. One of the bounty hunters here is um, got a little bit of a conscience, I guess. Is a bounty big enough on the resistance scum to make it worth it? I kind of have a spot, soft spot for the in my heart for underdogs. A big enough bounty to buy you a new conscience or a new heart. So uh, they contact the First Order, and you actually get uh, get Hux talking to this this lieutenant who first got the information. He's he's rather dismissive of the, of the lieutenant, but then in walks Supreme Leader Kylo Ren. And he, he automatically wants go after it. What, what are you, what are you going crazy about here? Um, we can, and will chase every rumor, every scrap, every vapor trail across the galaxy. We will mobilize every bounty hunter and informant and turn over every rock to find all of them and wipe everyone out. Every one of them out of existence. It looks like he's got Huxon sort of a force choke, I do believe we now understand each other more clearly. Yes, Supreme Leader. Hux, uh, y- you know, we had the Hux comic in the, the Age of Resistance, and, you know, Hux is an interesting character to me who's kind of, you know, kind of, you know, crapped on a little bit. But now, at least in here, he, he seems very subservient. <laughs> and Kylo seems to definitely have a grasp on the Supreme Leader role, at least from what we can see in writing. Uh, now back to our, our friends here in the Millennium Falcon. We're almost there, according to the nav computer, wherever there is. So, General, what exactly are we doing this far away from the real fight? Patience, Ray. We're here to honor an old debt to an old friend. There it is. I recognize that planet from old Imperial data banks I refurbished from, Batu- or from Barter back on Jakku. Isn't that Moncala? The ocean planet of Mon Cala. So many memories. I miss you, Akbar, my friend. It would be good to be where you can feel safe and welcomed for a change. However, our friends aren't really welcome. You shouldn't have come here after all you've done, General Organa. After all the death you brought to our waters. So tell us why we shouldn't kill you where you stand. Maybe not the welcome lay expected. So we will see how our friends get out of this in the next issue. And I want to say... Okay, yeah, there we go. So the next issue is out on the 16th. That's next week, right? Let me pull up a calendar and burn more time. So yeah, next week, and it actually looks... Okay, so great, 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 great. So these are these are each week here now. So th- this will be fantastic. So next week we'll get issue two, following week three, following week, and uh, this will be through October. Man, 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 yes. Uh, happy I don't have to wait a month for that one. <laughs> oh, what a cliffhanger. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed these comics. Um, and hopefully you're reading these comics as well. We're in a, we're in a great time right now of media for Star Wars leading up to the rise of Skywalker. We've got a ton coming up. We have a ton to do here. We've have a ton to do on the main show. We've got a ton to go through just in general. Uh, so make sure you stay tuned and make sure you keep current because there is a bunch to go over. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Thank you guys very much for checking out another episode. Again, we drop our Power Half Hour on Thursdays and our main show on Wednesdays. Uh, We've got, again, a ton to go over. So thank you guys very much for stopping by. Have a great rest of your week. And as always, may the Force be with you.